Hey there! Welcome to episode 7 of Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. I'm Tom Merritt, and this is the continuing saga of me <clears throat> watching the Star Wars movies in episodic order uh, and trying to approach them as if I knew nothing about them. So it's pretending that I'm just dumb. I don't know anything. I started with episode 1. All I know or at least all I'm going to pretend I know, is everything I've learned from actually watching episodes one through six. That's the music, by the way, of the Andrew Allen Trio, uh, live from the Cantina Band, andrewallentrio.com. You must, you must go find the Andrew Allen Trio. Seek it out. Uh, it is your quest. It's like a, a lost Jedi that you won't see until the end of the episode when you go buy it at andrewallentrio.com. Uh, yeah, this is actually one of the most difficult ones of this series so far, if you've been following all the way through, uh, because I have to remember what I do know from watching episodes one through six. Uh, but in some strange way, it's also one of the easiest because we're all dumb about episode seven as I'm recording this. It just came out this weekend. Uh, so it was really fun. And uh, just a, a, a little behind the scenes note, I went to see it on Thursday evening for the first time, went to see it again on Saturday with better seats so I could see the whole screen at once. And then this morning, I went to see it for a third time and sat way in the back away so I wouldn't bother anyone and took furious notes. And man, these notes are um, almost illegible because I was <laughs> I was in a dark a dark and movie theater couldn't see what I was writing. So anyway, here we go. Let us pretend that I'm dumb about Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Uh, so it starts out with the scroll, like always. Luke's gone, though. Uh, with last we saw, everybody had won. It was all over. It's kind of like, where are we going to go with this? Well, they made Luke disappear. The Republic is back. So I guess we're back to the Republic the way it was before it became called the Empire. So the people that Leia and Luke and Han were fighting now became the government. Except Leia's not really part. She's part of this other thing. It's a little confusing, uh, but they're calling on an old ally, it says. Uh, and if Luke's gone and Leia's calling, uh, everybody old is dead. <laughs> Is it Lando? Is it Han? Who's the old ally? Uh, and then there's something called the First Order mentioned, uh, which is apparently the bad guys. Leia's called a general. She's not a princess anymore, apparently. Uh, and, oh, wait a minute. Okay, maybe it is Lando that's the old ally because then they say she sends a daring pilot. Han is a daring pilot. Are we going to see a Merc guy here? Start off with the planet. Planets are back to being cool like they were in the early episodes, looking really good. We get a big ship all in profile. Always a big ship. I like that consistency. Uh, early episode feel here. I, I like it already. Uh, and then we go right to some clone troopers coming out of their little transport things. Uh, again, a very good... Uh, it feels like the transports that used to carry the actual clone troopers around in the olden days. Uh, so nice call back there. And then we get this, uh, we get this little rolly bot. Uh, he comes out of there and then we get a conversation with an old guy and a fancy looking guy. Who are these people? I have no idea who these people are. I was expecting you to see old allies. All right. Well, the old guy seems to know Leia. Uh, and, uh, apparently the rolly bot is fancy guys cause they, they start heading off together. Uh, then uh, Fancy Guy has to run for his Luke plane. He's got a Luke Skywalker-looking plane out there, like they used to use to blow up the planet stations. Uh, he doesn't take very good care of his because it catches on fire. And then he has to send Rollybot away. Um, curious why the troopers are burning everything if they're looking something for something. Aren't they worried they're going to burn the thing that they're looking for? Uh, but okay, uh, Rollybot gets the thing. Go Rollybot, save the thing. All right. Uh, back to uh, two clone troopers that seem to be friends. One of them gets uh, kind of attacked, and the other is very sad. Uh, the bloody clone, he gets like blood all over his helmet. Uh, bloody clone is is uh, also a scaredy clone uh, because he just kind of doesn't look like he knows what he's doing out of there. Uh, then this big old Palpatine-looking ship lands. Obviously not Palpatine, he's dead. And we are introduced to fake Vader. Uh, fake Vader comes striding out and he knows old guy and he's got like a Vader like voice. Um, and he's uh, looking for the thing with the map. Uh, and then fancy guy shoots a laser 
at fake Vader, but fake Vader stops it. I mean, this guy, maybe he's more powerful than Vader. I don't know. He could stop a freaking laser bolt in midair like that. Never saw Vader do that. Anakin never did anything like that. But then they have this little funny thing where fancy guys like, uh, I don't know, who talks first? You talk first? So fancy guys got some swagger. And then a metal clone trooper shows up. That's cool looking. Uh, and orders the clone troopers to fire on all the people. Uh, bloody clones in line, but he won't fire. So there's something going on. Fake Vader sir notices that. Uh, I feel like bloody clone trooper is in trouble. All right, then they burn up the Luke ship that Fancy Guy came in, and I'm like, wouldn't you want to save that for parts or something? But okay. Uh, and we're off to Lonely Rolly Bot rolling through the desert. Uh, we're back up to the old Republic ship. Uh, well, it's the Republic ship in the sense of what the Empire ships were looking like. Anyway, it's the bad guys. Uh, it's confusing who's who sometimes. And Metal Clone talking to Bloody Clone. Uh, Bloody Clone Trooper takes off his helmet, too, and we get to see who he is. I don't think we've seen that since, like, the first three episodes where any of the, the clone troopers actually took off their helmets and uh, berates him. It says, you know what? That's not a good thing. Then we get Mummy Person. We'll see her car in a minute, but uh, we get this Mummy Person, uh, and then after she comes out of the wreckage, uh, it turns out she's Mummy Girl. Mummy Girl is thirsty, uh, needs to drink some water because she's out in the desert, and she's inside an old, big old Empire Republic ship wreck. Uh, she's a salvager, um, and she has this really cool car that is pretty amazing. And those wrecks, as she goes driving by, those wrecks are big! Uh, that's like full on, there's a, there's one of the Luke ships down there, and there's a big old uh, Republic Empire ship. Amazing. Uh, we get some wildlife, we get a vulture trying to eat a bunch of metal. I always like the wildlife. And then more cool aliens uh, walking around. Always love the aliens in these episodes, that's a good sign, keeping it real. Um, she gets paid in food, I think. I think that was food that they, they gave her. So she's not a slave, she's just sort of a you know, poor person working for food. Or maybe it's like a company town, like the old mining towns. Uh, it does look like Anakin's old planet, but they didn't call it that. Uh, so I think it's a different planet. She's marking things on the wall, so she's definitely been there a while. Uh, turns the powder into bread. It is food. Yeah, and I want I want that. I want that powder that just boop, pop up. You got a loaf. Pretty, you know, for a quarter portion, that was pretty filling, I have to say. Uh, funny bit where she has an old uh, 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 Luke uh, Luke ship helmet thing uh, that she puts on her head. That's kind of fun. And then she hears uh, some things in the distance. Oh, uh, and we noticed that she's actually living in an old dead elephant thing. One of those walking elephant things uh, that we saw on the ice planet back in a few episodes back. So she's living in the wreck of that. That's kind of cool. Uh, so she goes over to save the rolly droid. Why she saved the rolly droid, I don't really understand. And maybe she's going to sell it. Uh, I mean, I've, and then she just takes it from that guy and he lets her, he kind of mad about it, but he lets her. Uh, so I was a little surprised, but then I get it. She treats Rolly bot like a person and lets it go. So to, to her, she's not saving a thing. She's saving a person. Okay. That's really interesting. Uh, then we're back up and fake Vader is taking on Fancy Guy, trying to get the information about where Rolly Bot is. Uh, fake Vader has got the skills. Fancy Guy's all bravado, but Fake Vader's like, uh, Rolly Bot's down on the planet, it's got the map thing, uh, so we need to go down here. By the way, right now, it's all new people. We have not seen any familiar faces yet. Mummy Girl's talking to, to Rolly Bot and uh, indicates that she's waiting for her family, so that's kind of intriguing. Uh, then she comes up, and they offer her like sixty portions of food for the droid. Sell the droid, girl! Like you'll you'll eat for months, and you can still work. And may I mean, get yourself off that planet. Why won't anyone sell droids? Okay, maybe it's a bad. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we should treat droid, droids like per people. Uh, all right, back to Bloody Clone, who turns out to be saving Fancy Guy. Uh, so Bloody Clone's done with all of this. That he maybe he wasn't Scaredy Clone. Maybe he was just really like done with the whole shooting villagers thing. 
there is no way this plan should work. Uh, I like the funny part where he's like, stay calm, stay calm. And Fancy Guy says, I am calm. And Bloody Clone says, no, I was talking to myself. Uh, so they got some good banner in here. They Two of them get in one of the, the bad guy ships. And I didn't know you could fit two in there. Also, they're not wearing flight suits, which apparently, I thought you always had to wear a flight suit to sit in one of those. All right, so then they start shooting up the place, making it very obvious that they're trying to steal this ship. I don't know how they get away with it, but they do. I don't know why they don't just fly away as fast as they can, but they decide they have to try to take out the cannons on this huge battleship that they're facing. There is some nice shooting from Bloody Clone, even though he's a newbie. Uh, we also get to know their names very clearly. He's called Finn. Actually, Fancy Guy gives him the name Finn. Uh, and Fancy Guy is Poe. That's easy to remember. Finn and Poe. All right. Then uh, uh, Metal Clone is talking to Fake Vader, and Fake Vader remembers Finn. Oh, wait. No, Metal Clone isn't talking yet. Fake Vader knows it was Finn who stole the ship because he remembers him from the village. Uh, we get a great battle scene, though. We get we get a nice little battle. Uh, then Poe says, go back to Jakku. And at first, I'm like, why would you go back to Jakku? But I forgot. Oh, right. No, we need to get really droid. Um, okay, so we're back to dro- Jakku. But then they're bickering about it. And uh, Finn gets distracted and gets them shot down. Uh, nice to see that in this episode, bickering has consequences, folks. It'll get you shot down. All right, then Metal Clone says, ah, I was surprised that that was Finn. Uh, He didn't show any signs of anything. Well, except for the down on the planet, but apparently that's the first time. Uh, Finn survives the crash somehow. I guess he got thrown way far away is what the implication is because he sees the smoke way off in the distance. Uh, And then somehow Poe's jacket survived. (laughs) I don't know how that happened. Didn't get burned up. Uh, And then the desert eats the ship. So I'm like, how did all those huge wrecks survive if the desert can eat ships? But okay. Uh, Nice scene where we see Finn leaving his clone trooper armor behind. He's starting anew. He's got Poe's jacket on. uh, And he wanders into town, uh, has to share some water with a space hippo. And then uh, he ends up uh, seeing Mummy Girl. And we'll we'll get back to that because this thing's going back and forth rapid. This is good pace. I love the pace of this. All right. Uh, so then, uh, Fake Vader is talking to one of the other uh, generals or something about how they they really need to go get uh, Roly Bot intact and not not destroy him. Uh, and makes a crack about maybe you need a clone army. Uh, ho ho ho! Nice and saucy. Uh, so. The clone troopers are not actually clones. I just being dumb when I say that. All right, uh, back to sharing the water with the space hippo. Uh, Mummy girl is being attacked to steal Rollybot, and uh, we see Finn start to run over to say, "Hey, wait a minute! I'm going to save you for some reason, just because he's a good person, I suppose." But Mummy girl don't need that. Mummy girl's taking care of business. She's fine. Uh, in fact, we're starting to see Finn's kind of useless. All right, then Rollybot notices, hey, I know that jacket. And then tables are turned. Mummy Girl is after Finn and beating the crap out of him. Even Rollybot gets a little shock in there. Uh, but Finn says, oh, this is Poe's jacket. And Rollybot says, oh, oh, well, if you know Poe's name, obviously. I mean, you could have killed Poe, taken his jacket and still know his name. Doesn't prove anything. Uh, and then he says that, Poe didn't survive the crash. Rollybot looks really sad. They were buddies. Um, uh, Then, Mummy Girl says, wait, are you with the Resistance? And Finn says, yes, I am a con man and a liar. I am with the Resistance. Uh, So, we... Finn may not be such a good guy, because he's very quick to lie and kind of useless. All right. Um, Everybody knows Luke, though. There's a Luke Skywalker comes up. Map to Luke Skywalker. Oh, Luke Skywalker. I thought he was a myth. So he's famous, but he might not be real, is what people think. Uh, then we see a couple troopers show up, and uh, <laughs> and then Finn grabs Mummy Girl's hand, and Mummy Girl's like, stop, stop grabbing my hand. Stop doing that. Uh, all right. It's nice to see her saving Finn, though, 
at one point. So that's good. Uh, and then they're running towards a ship and she says she's a pilot. How is she a pilot? Okay, that's intriguing. Where'd she learn to be a pilot? I thought she was just living on the desert, being a mummy girl, doing salvage. So then the ship they're running to gets blown up and they say, well, let's go in this garbage ship and it's junk ship. Our first familiar piece from previous episodes. And by the way, see, even Mummy Girl knows it's a piece of junk. Uh, all right. It's old, but apparently it still works. And she is not a good pilot. Uh, she <laughs> she, can, she barely gets out of that town without destroying the whole thing. Uh, and then we see that the fighters have flight suits. Okay? Just saying. Great chase scene. Love this battle scene, uh, battle slash chase scene. I, I love the point, the bit where there's people on the ground salvaging, and they're like, "Whoa, what's going on here?" Uh, junk ship is old. The cannon gets stuck while Finn's trying to use it. Uh, so I, I like that they're like, "Yeah, this thing is not in perfect working order." Uh, then it turns out maybe she is a good pilot after all, uh, because she flies through the wreckage and loses the other ships and gets off the planet. And oddly, nobody chases them off the planet. There's apparently this huge evil ship lurking in orbit. And I guess they go off the other side of the planet without being noticed. I don't know. Uh, and then Mummy Girl introduces herself as Ray. That's easy to remember. Nice, easy to remember name. Ray. All right. Uh, fake Vader gets real mad, throws a tantrum. Kind of a brat, Fake Vader. Okay, this is not a mature, uh, self-possessed Anakin Vader type here. Uh, but he can do Jedi stuff. He he like makes a guy float over to him so he can kind of choke him a little. You know, Anakin could just choke without moving the guy. I'm just saying. Uh, then we're back uh, on the junk ship and Roly Droid uh, telling Ray uh, where the base is. Frankly, frankly, you know, Finn admits to Roly Bot that he's not with the Resistance, and Roly Bot tells them where the base is anyway, and kind of makes buddies. It was a bad idea, Roly Bot. Should not have trusted uh, him. Finn is a con man. Clear and simple now. Like he cons Rollybot into revealing where the base is. And yet, Ray wants to go back to Jakku. Why does everyone go to go back to Jakku? Says Finn, and I agree with him. Okay. Um, then it turns out they got followed after all. Aha! So my worry about that is now answered. They did get followed, and then... Ray comes up with the idea, uh, or wait, maybe it's Finn comes up with the idea of poisoning them. See, he's con man. He's not a total good guy here. Uh, turns out BB-8 heavy. We learn his name. Finally sunk in that his name is BB-8. It's not that hard to remember. Um, and who should walk onto the ship? Well, it turns out I was wrong. It was not the bad guys who caught them. It's Merc Guy and Tarzan Man, Han and Chewie. They are back on their junk ship. Uh, and turns out Han is famous because Ray knows him too, and as does Finn. Uh, by the way, I, I make a side note here. Uh, BB-8 has some cool rope things where he can stabilize himself, keep himself from rolling all around. That's pretty cool. Um, then a bunch of people who Han owes money to show up, so it's kind of a callback to the slug guy that he owed money to. Uh, I don't know why he decides to have BB-8 with him when he sees people who he owes money to, because wouldn't they just want to take this bot as part of their payment? Am I a bad person that I think of droids as fungible assets? Probably. Okay. Uh, but they actually do know that BB-8 is wanted uh, by the bad guys. Uh, but Ray is clever. She's like, okay, I know how to do it. We're going to, we're going to turn off the fuses and close the blast doors. That way it'll shut the bad guys out. Instead, she releases horrible mouth monsters. Uh, they are essentially big balls of mouth that eat you. They are scary. Uh, really thought that Finn was going to be eaten at one point by one of the mouth monsters. Uh, Ray pulls a nice trick with a door from a remote place and then we have a little callback with Finn fighting off a tentacle, kind of like Luke did uh, in the trash place before. And then freaking Chewie gets shot. And for the first time, for the first time in all of their years together, Han gets to use Chewie's gun and he likes it. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and then as they start to take off in the junk ship, I like the fact that one of the mouth monsters is kind of stuck on the edge, even as they're going into light speed and it, then it just falls off. All right. 
Then we reveal we have a new planet station, Planet Station 3, except this one seems to be actually made of a planet. Uh, it is huge. And then we see a huge, giant Palpatine-like guy. He's not Palpatine, obviously, uh, but he's sort of like him, and he is gigantic. I uh, never saw a race like this in any of the episodes before. Everybody wants Luke. Uh, and then giant guy lets loose like, oh, by the way, fake Vader, you're going to have to face your father, Han Solo. What the? What? Fake Vader is Han's son? Okay, so it's got to be Leia's, right? And then that would make fake Vader Anakin Vader's grandson, if that's the case. Um Wow. Okay, blow my mind. Uh, back to Han and Ray flying the junk ship. They're working well together. I like to see that. Uh, Han even gets a nice line in about BB-8. Move, ball. Uh, Chewie wants to actually play chess when the chess set gets activated. thought that was a clever little callback. Uh, and then they ask BB-8 to show the map. BB-8 doesn't even hesitate this time, just shows the map. You should not be showing these people this map, BB-8. Han used to be a member of something, but he left. He's on the run. Who knows where he says he went back to his old ways. Who knows where his alliance is? Finn could be a spy for all we know. He used to be a stormtrooper for goodness sake. We don't want, we don't trust him at all. And Ray, I mean, she's nice enough, but we don't know who she's a salvager. She's not, she doesn't have clearance. So no, you do not show them the map. Oh, that's all right. BBA shows them the map. Uh, and it turns out that Han tells the story that Luke, like Kenobi before him, was training people, and one of the people he was training turned against him and turned evil. Now, he doesn't say it's his son, but it seems like it might be implied there, don't you think? Uh, and it looks like Luke has gone to uh, the first Jedi temple. Okay. Uh, we're still going here. Great planets. Uh, again, they were a little off for the last few episodes, but we're back to good looking planets. Uh, nice castle kind of has a first rebel base feel from a few episodes back. Finn still a liar lying his ass off. Uh, but he can't con a con man. And uh, Han says, uh, women always find out. Like Han knows. Han knows that, that, that Finn's been lying. Uh, then Han offers Ray a job. I kind of like that on the uh, on the Falcon. And uh, then she says, no, I got to go back to Jakku. What is the deal with her wanting to go back to Jakku? There's nothing there. She had to work for food. You get offered a job on junk ship. You take a job on junk ship. That's all I'm saying. Cool castle, though. Thousand-year-old lady runs it. She's kind of funny. She thinks Chewie's her boyfriend. <laughs> kind of like that. Another bar full of awesome aliens. A good recurring bit. We had that... Very early, I think episode two, we had the first bar full of aliens, and they keep going back to that. I love that. Uh, obviously, there are spies for the good guys and the bad guys who report in that Rolly Droid was there. But you kind of knew that was going to happen. I think Han's just in a race against time. He's like, I'm going to get you off the planet before they can get here. Uh, and apparently, droids now allowed in the bars. Progressive. We've moved on in the galaxy. It's good to see. Back to the planet station, uh, and we see... Uh, fake Vader talking to something, and it turns out to be Anakin's head, his burned up head. How did fake Vader get Anakin's head off of the mini bear place? I have no idea, uh, but he calls it grandpa. So now we know Leia is his mom. Well, unless Luke's his mom, but that seems probably unlikely. So Leia is his mom. And Leia finally gets mentioned by uh, by the small small lady. Uh, Han and Leia broke up, I guess, after Fake Vader uh, turned bad. <sighs> Finn does more lying, and uh, the, the little smart lady says, uh, you know, you're always running. You're one of those people who's always running. It's like, yeah. Also, Maz, I think her name is. Maz's eyes are freaky. Uh Finn says he has to get out of there. He has to, he doesn't want to fight the bad guys. So is he a spy? Is he a spy? Is he trying to get back? Is he like deep cover? All right. Then Maz asks, who's the girl? And I want to know, but no, we move on. Uh, and Finn is trying to run away. Ray's trying to talk him out. Uh, he finally comes clean and says, look, I'm not with the resistance. So, okay. He's probably just a con man and not a spy. And obviously, he used to be a clone trooper. Maybe he conned his way into being a clone trooper. I don't know. Uh, 
He lies a lot, though. So when he said, uh, I was taken from my family and never met him, maybe he's lying about that, too. All right, so he shouldn't go, but he does. Then Ray hears a baby crying and goes downstairs to an unlock a room that unlocks itself for her, opens up what should have been a locked case, and finds Anakin's lightsaber. So she picks it up and has this freaky, I don't know if it's a flashback, a flash forward, uh, fake Vader is in there. R2, for the first time we see, is in there, and someone with a metal hand touching him could be Luke. Uh, all kinds of crazy stuff going on in there. I think I hear Kenobi's voice at one point. And uh, it's making me wonder, like, is she Anakin's granddaughter too? But Han doesn't recognize her, so she Luke's kid? I don't know. Um, anyway, Maz comes down and says, no one's coming back for you on Jakku. Thank you, Maz, for talking sense to Rey. Don't go back to Jakku. But she says someone still could come back. Uh, and your belonging is ahead. And she's talking about Luke. So, did I mean, did she just say you're Luke's daughter? She kind of didn't, but she sort of implied that family is involved there somehow. Also, I want to know how she got a hold of Luke's, uh, well, Anakin's lightsaber that Luke had in the clouds. I mean, it fell into clouds. That's some, that's some good recovery work. Um, okay. Now Ray runs off into the forest because she's upset at getting freaked. I kind of understand getting upset with all those freaky images running through your head, but where is she going? No idea where she's going. Back to the planet station. Uh, bad guys are going to blow up the New Republic Senate. Last days of the Republic. And that is one big laser that shoots out of there. Everybody can see it. They can see it over at Maz's place. You can see it throughout the whole galaxy, apparently. And there's the capital city. Everybody's in the old capital city. We haven't seen that. Well, we had a brief thing at the end of the last episode. We haven't seen that in a long time. Uh, bye, capital. Miss ya. Nice to see you again. Now you're toast and everybody blew up. Uh, bad way to end a party. And it's not just one planet, by the way. They, they This thing can blow up several at once. Uh, Finn <laughs> finally feels bad about that and goes back to Han, so that's good. And uh, <sighs> bad guys are here. So they arrive. Fake Vader arrives. Uh, Maz gives the lightsaber to Finn and says, Finn, you need to take this to Rey. Uh, so at least we didn't now, now we know that Anakin's lightsaber is going to be part of this. Then the bad guys start blowing up Maz's castle. The bastards is a nice castle. Uh, great battle scene. Uh, great shooting by Han with the no look shot. He pulls, pulls Chewie's uh, weapon again. It's like, really want to use this really like this thing. We see Finn pull out a lightsaber and have a lightsaber battle with a baton wielding, uh, trooper. So that's kind of cool. Maybe, oh, maybe Finn has a little Skywalker in him somewhere. Okay. Uh, and then crap. Nope, he's not very good with the lightsaber. He's captured. Chewie and Han are captured. They're all captured. And the good guys show up. Remember, spies from both sides said everything's here. So the good guys were just lagging a little bit. And we see Poe. He survived. Don't know how yet. Uh, and then uh, Finn grabs the saber back during some shooting. Uh, that was fast. Great battle scene continues. Uh, fake Vader pulls out his uh, lightsaber, and he's good with it. Uh, he's His lightsaber is dangerous to wield, though, because it's got little spiky things on the side. But he can, he can battle off uh, the laser bolts that Rey is shooting at him, just like Anakin and Kenobi could. Uh, so he's definitely strong in that, that way. And then he makes uh, Ray pass out and captures her and says, oh, you've got the map in your head. I don't need the bot anymore. I can just take you. You're as good as the map. I'll just read your mind because I'm that powerful. And of course, Finn sees that and just loses his crap and goes running after her. And when he tells Han, Han's like, yeah, I know. And for a minute, you're like, whoa, cold as ice, Han. Uh, you and Ray, you just offered Ray a job. It seemed like you liked her. But we see why, because guess who pops out of uh, a good guy ship? It's Leia. Uh, and remember, they broke up, so he's a little distracted. All right. Uh, we see what is about to be a touching scene when Golden Bot shows back up 3PO and his comic relief. You always have to have some dumb comic relief. It was Jar Jar and it's 3PO. It's still 3PO. So there we go. All right. Actually, frankly, we don't get much more 3PO in this. Um, and then Chewie comes in and gives the big hug. 
They talk about our son, meaning fake Vader. Uh, damn, that's powerful. Uh, and uh, then we see Finn hook back up with Poe. A little Poe-mance going on between these two. They're pretty happy to see each other. Of course, Finn, uh, I mean, Poe happy to see BB-8 as well. Um, base is always in some subterranean basement with roots in the walls. That, that must be the thing they like. Maybe Leia likes that. We see R2 for real this time, uh, but he's not on. At first, I thought he was broken. Apparently, 3PO says he's in low power mode. Um, and then everybody's talking about finding Luke. Uh, then we get a little more of Han and Leia reminiscing about their son. Uh, that's what tore them apart uh, when when their son turned evil. So, okay, I get that. Um, Han says... There's too much Vader in him, meaning it's your fault, Leia. <laughs> your dad, your dad's the evil guy. Uh, and Leia says, no, there's still light in him. So they believe. Then we see uh, fake Vader and Ray in the interrogation room. Fake Vader looks a little like the robot general uh, from like the third episode here. He's kind of crouched over and skinny. Um, I'm telling you, BB-8 should not have shown her the map. So he's so fake Vader starts Jediing Ray, and he's going to get the map out of her head. You know it. Uh, he is powerful. We've seen that. He can stop laser bolts. He like got the location of BB-8 out of Poe like that. She starts beating him off. This they're more to this little mummy girl than I thought. Is she a Jedi too? She got some Jedi powers. Uh, she starts reading his mind. Like, he reads her mind about all kinds of things. She starts reading his mind. You're afraid of not being Darth Vader, fake Vader. And he does not like that. <laughs> uh, gets real upset and leaves. Uh, and then she tries to Jedi one of the troopers that's guarding her. And it doesn't work at first. He's like, I'll tighten your restraints. But then it works. She's got the Jedi. I love this. Kind of thought maybe it was Finn because he had the lightsaber, but no. All right. Uh, fake Vader throws a tantrum again. Like, really not mature, this guy. Uh, and the, the the troopers kind of back off. That's, that's pretty funny. All right. Uh, now, we're back to a council meeting uh, where we see... Uh, Fish guy again, and the fat head that that ran around with Lando. Bunch of people showing up, talking about blowing up a planet station. Uh, and Han is like, well, there's always a way to blow it up. And Finn's like, I can get you in there. Can he? Um, I was doubting that even before I saw the, the whole rest of the movie. I'm just going to say. Uh, but then Han and Leia have a touching scene. They still love each other. Hugs, no kisses. Not, you know, not all is forgiven, maybe. But she says... Bring home our son, fake Vader, please. And he says he'll try. All right, so Ray is picking up some Jedi stuff, uh, and fake Vader knows it, so he's complaining to Giant Guy. Uh, then he senses his dad just landed uh, because Han and Finn and Chewie are going onto the planet station to bring down the shields. Uh, and so when Han says, what, what did you do here anyway? Finn says sanitation. Han says, what? Finn says, yeah, I just came here for Ray. And Han says, oh, well, that is not good. People are relying on us. Liar, con man, liar. Although Han's kind of the same. Uh, Finn says, we'll figure something out. We'll use the force. And then Han has one of the best lines in the movie. That's not how the force works. Like he would know. Hilarious. Uh, okay, so then Ray is like climbing a wall because that's what she does. Yeah, she that, you know That's her daily work. So she climbs a wall, and then she finds a thing to crawl in. I don't know what that thing is, but she crawls into it. Uh, then Finn and Han capture Metal Clone and just force her to lower the shields, and she does it. And I'm like, really? Would she do that? Like, they just point a gun at her head, and she wouldn't say, well, kill me. I am loyal to the bad people. I mean, I don't know. Fake Vader's kind of immature, so maybe Metal Clone's like, look, I know what side my bread is buttered. She does threaten them a lot, though. Uh, then we start a third planet battle, and it's not just one shot this time. Uh, first time, Luke just needed to have one shot go in. Second time, Lando needed to blow up a core, but it was really just one shot. This time, Poe and friends got to keep hitting it. Uh... Then we see Han and Finn talking about rescuing Rey, 
And there's a funny thing where Han's like doing this and uh, with his chin and Finn's like, why are you doing that with your chin? And it's because Ray is climbing up the outside again. I guess she was climbing through something before. I don't know. Uh, then, so they go and they find Ray. She's surprised to see them. And Finn and Ray have a big old friendly hug, maybe a little more than friendly hug. I don't know. But Han says, escape now, hug later. He's got some of the best lines. Battle, battle, battle. Good, good battle. Love this battle. Maybe not the best battle, but right in there in a solid level in the middle of the pack for battles in these episodes. Uh, and then as they come outside, Han says, look, we have all these explosives. Um, we should blow this thing up from the inside because it looks like they're having a hard time. I don't know how he can tell. But he's like, it looks like they're having a hard time. We should blow this thing up. All right. So then they go back inside. Han and Chewie are going to place the bombs and Ray and Finn go to uh, disable something to let them in. And then we see fake Vader. And you know, you know, another father and son scene is coming. Uh, risky move for Han. He sees fake Vader out on the catwalk and walks out on the catwalk and yells, Ben! Fake Vader's name is Ben. Ben, fake Vader. Uh, but Ben doesn't call Han dad. So Ben is not okay. He is still calling his dad Han Solo. Also, that walkway should have had a railing. I don't think it would have changed anything, but that was a, that was a safety problem. I was really worried that both of them were going to fall. Uh, ben is a brat, uh, the way he talks to his dad, but he does tear up, and you can tell there is a little good left, and for a moment you're thinking Han might do this. Han might turn him back and bring him home. Maybe a little overly symbolic, but the light that they were siphoning from the sun to charge the weapon ends right then. The light goes out, things turn red. And fake Vader turns on his lightsaber, sending it through his dad's chest. No! God! No! He's killed his dad. One of, one of the best characters in all six episodes, seven episodes. Fake Vader sucks. Goodbye, Merc guy. You see Leia feel it. Flashback, Leia feeling Luke when he had his hand cut off. Imagine how this is hitting her now. Her ex-husband uh, was just killed. Uh, and I, Han falls. Goodbye. Chewie just starts yelling, shooting. Kill him, Chewie! Kill him! Blow him all up! Hits the detonator. Boom! Uh, for a moment, I think, yes, they killed fake Vader too. Fake Vader's still alive. So F fake Vader chases Finn and Ray out into the snow, uh, knocks Ray out, just kind of force throws her into a tree. So Finn, but Finn has the lightsaber and uh, okay, maybe Finn's got something too. We were surprised by Ray. Maybe we're going to be surprised by Finn. So they start a saber battle. Go Finn. Fake Vader's hurt. He's like pounding his wound. Just, you know, keep him going. Uh, but Finn isn't trained. You can just tell. Like the fact that he even gets any blows in to defend himself means Fake Vader's toying with him. And you can tell he's toying with him. He just leans in and kind of starts to hurt him with the edge of it. You know, the little vent things off the side here. And then Finn is done for. Uh he he loses the lightsaber, he falls down, he's he's passed out. But instead of fake Vader finishing him off, he looks over and he's like, Oh, that's my grandpa's lightsaber. I know, I, I recognize that. I'm gonna kill him with that. So he starts to like make it float over to him Jedi style, and it floats right past him into Ray's hands. Cause you know who's got the Jedi too? Ray does. That's who. Get him, Force Girl. Oh, yeah, right. There's still a battle going on. We see that happening some more. And Poe flies in and boom, 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 boom. Several shots. He did it, I think. And yes, yes, you see the thing blow up as the as the ships start to fly away. All right. Back to the battle. Ray and fake Vader. She's using it like she uses this pole, but she's doing okay uh, until fake Vader kind of gets her on a cliff edge and then tempts her and says, I'll train you. She is strong. He says the word force. She says the word force. Some, some light goes on somewhere, and she starts battling him off. Go, Ray! Uh, 
Fake Vader Ben is hurt, by the way. He is not doing well. And she is starting to overcome him. I'm just saying, is she Luke's daughter? She kind of looks like Luke now that she she's figured out how to use this lightsaber correctly. Um, and then we see a quick scene with giant guy talking to one of the generals saying, uh, okay, you need to get fake Vader back to finish his training. Oh, fake Vader isn't done with his training. He is not a full on anti Jedi yet. Um, so then the planet splits apart and I guess fake Vader is going to be saved. We never see that. Ray runs over to a passed out Finn. Uh, he is definitely not looking good. But the third planet station is down. Uh, it's blowing up. And it does. It explodes. We get back to the base. Finn's still passed out. He's alive. He's got a heartbeat, uh, but he's hurt. And then you see Leia. Tear up, man. Leia and Ray. Get a big hug in there. Bittersweet victory. It's a victory. Most people are celebrating. Leia knows. Ray knows. It was not all positive. Uh, does Leia know who Ray is? I can't tell. Anyway, then we see sad Chewie. That just breaks your heart, too. But we get something good, because R2 wakes up, uh, and 3PO says, you found what? So we found something, uh, and it turns out he found the rest of the map that BB-8 has the piece of. Not sure why he was hiding it, or where he was looking for it in low power mode while he was off, but oh, whatever. Okay, we now know where Luke is. Uh and uh, it looks like Ray is going to go off to try to find him. She gets some new clothes. She does like to show her triceps in all of her designs. Uh, Finn is still passed out, so she says a, a quiet goodbye to him. Leia gives her blessing, says the Force be with you, but I guess Leia's not going. Uh, it's just going to be Ray and Chewie as her co-pilot. Uh, turns out R2 went with him too, because Chewie and R2 are waiting at the bottom of the steps that apparently lead up to Luke, and only Ray is going to go up those steps. Uh, you know, R2 could have like used his jets and just gone up there, but they're like, oh, we'll just let her go. Maybe they're like, oh, we'll just let father and daughter have time. I don't know. I don't know if that's what's going on. But we get to the top of the steps, and there's a person in a hood. You know who it is. But as soon as he turns around, you're like, Luke, for goodness sake, we've been waiting for you all movie. Doesn't say a word. Just looks... Uh, he kind of looks like Kenobi now. He's he looks like Obi Wan did in in when he was old and met Luke for the first time. Also looks kind of pissed. And then Ray holds out Anakin's lightsaber and says, uh, "Hey, this is yours." And Luke looks like he's saying, "Oh, I lost that in a gas giant planet. Where'd you find that?" Uh, and that is where they leave it. We don't get to hear them talk. We don't know what's happening next. We're going to episode eight in a year and 15 months. Year and, uh, so many months. May 2017. 20, yeah, May 2017. I guess we'll find out then. R.I.P. Merc guy. All right. Uh, lots of new characters again in this one. That seems to be their thing. Every three episodes, they just kind of throw a bunch of new characters in you, restart the story again. Uh, but a very enjoyable uh, chapter in this ongoing story, and I am looking forward to the next episode. And like uh, like I said, the next episode of Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars will be sometime in May of 2017 uh, when we get to watch episode eight uh, for the first time. Uh, if if I'm still around, <laughs> it's still recording. I uh, I plan on doing one of these. Uh, thanks to everybody who's given such kind feedback. I know this is not for everybody, but some folks have really enjoyed it, and I, I'm glad uh, that you have. So I'll see you in a couple of years. Don't forget to go check out Andrew Allen Trio at andrewallentrio.com, live from the cantina, and we will see you in 2017.